But joining me now to talk about the rise in ISIS recruitment in France and the wider issue of terrorism prevention is French Senator Nathalie Goulet, who is also the vice chair of the country's Foreign Affairs and Security uh, Committee. And, Senator, it does seem extraordinary that during a period of heightened security, terror prevention a priority, the number of fighters leaving France for jihad is going up. What is failing in France? Well, it's very scary first. And uh, despite the fact that we increased tremendously our regulation, you know, we voted uh, almost two new regulations, there is nothing we can do. And it's, it's really a, a, a big issue and um, we are all very concerned. But uh, in fact, uh, the number increased. There is no, no question about it. The, the, the French government, the Prime Minister, in fact, says that uh, th this is a war in France, but a war on home soil, in that case, who then is the enemy? You know, I think that the, the local situation um, is, uh, is also uh, very heavy, and those young Muslims, they, they don't feel citizen, and uh, so it's very easy for them um, with the social networks, as you mentioned previously, uh, to follow anybody and try to travel to Syria. I mean, they have no ideology, they have no job, they don't feel citizen, they felt discrimination. And uh, despite the heavy regulation and the new intelligence uh, regulation too, we cannot stop them. We create a new incrimination, uh, we can uh, take them to court, but then uh, before taking them to court, we have to catch them. And that is almost impossible right now. So, so would you agree that, that France lacks a workable approach when it comes to Islamic indoctrination and fighting that uh, recruitment? It's not working, is it? You know, um, now you, you have to um, face that we have a new kind of recruitment. For example, we have some uh, uh, matchmaker. Uh, they, they are taking some people from north of France, from people of south of France. Um, they check on, the, for example, Telegram, which is a, a new um, um, uh, website, uh, and the messenger. And then they bring them together to create a new team. I mean, it's, it's like a race between a bullet and a helmet. Mm. There is always somebody who is running faster. And right now, the terrorists are running faster than the lawmakers. You, you, you know, I, I suppose it becomes an issue where you end up treating the symptom and, and not the cause. Uh, De-radicalization programs in France, I think it's fair to say, are in disarray. Uh, some of them have stopped. Some of them aren't funded. There are disagreements on what to do. Uh, how is it that France has been unable to tailor a response that works? Well, it, it's because it's, it's an, whatever you can think about the French system, uh, we, we didn't want any Patriot Act, but day after day we are getting closer to the Patriot Act. But regarding the de-radicalization or radicalization, uh, I do prefer to use uh, the reconstitution, reframe of the citizen link, uh, because there is a breach of, a breach of citizenship. And uh, we, we, we didn't build right now a unified program. We, we missed some evaluation. We, we were not ready to face this new threat. And day after day, we are training the trainers. It's a total new issue for us. And, and really, it's, a, it's very difficult. The Minister of Interior is working very hard. The lawmakers are all also working. But right now, we, we cannot face that um, 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 from a very efficient way. But at the same time, we catch this young girl at the same time, a guy who, who was consulting a, a terrorist website uh, was uh, uh, condemned for two years without submission uh, some days ago. So the things are, are, are going much better, but then we, we, must, we must increase prevention and we also need badly uh, to increase uh, intelligence. And, and surely engagement with the community as well. I, I, you know, how delicate is the social balance in France. And I know you've talked a lot about is Islamophobia in France and, and how that creates its own 
uh, a motion, I suppose, that French society is losing a, a sense of uh, unity and inclusion. Surely the community outreach is what's important and it's not what's happening. Well, you know, I'm, I, I was talking about that with uh, Christian Amonpour during Paris attack last November. Uh, I told her that I was scared about uh, hell of Islamophobia. It's exactly what happened. In fact, it's the story of egg and chicken. Um, first, you have Islamophobia, uh, and then the, the, the young people, they use this Islamophobia uh, to escape France and fight uh, with uh, ISIL. And at the same time, all this uh, wave of uh, attack and uh, blood and tears are also bringing Islamophobia. So it's like an endless and vicious circle, you know. But the situation, the social situation right now is, is very, very heavy. And, and some of the, of the main people, uh, the thinker, think that we are getting close to an atmosphere of civil war somehow in some uh, area. You, you, you think it could be that bad, it's civil bad. war? It's, it's civil very war. scary. Well, the atmosphere is bad. Mm. I mean, nobody won't listen. Nobody want to listen to a rational speech, you know. Nobody want to think. The people, they just react. We have today this uh, story of a, a Burkini uh, swimming pool, which was private, private, privatized. Yeah. And, uh, and then it created, uh, on, on the social network, a real issue. Um, and for nothing, just because the people, they, they, they felt like a threat by communitarism. And our society doesn't want to recognize communitarism. But at the same time, the Muslim in France, they, they need this communitarism now um, to, to fight against Islamophobia. Uh, so, you know, it's an endless circle. It's like that. It, and, and the atmosphere is really bad. And, and, and just finally, there are elections next year. Do you fear that uh, with Muslims in France not feeling very French with that community disengagement, do you fear that when these elections are taking place, the sentiment in the country now is going to push uh, politics further to the right? Oh yes, badly, badly, and then they use um, uh, Islam uh, as um, as a goal, as a, as a, a subject, because they know that uh, talking about uh, Islam uh, will bring them a lot of ballots, and it, there is also a, ra a, a race uh, to reach uh, extreme right, and it's always an issue. Or for financing mosque, you know, the prime minister just dropped that on the table last week such as he has to prohibit any um, uh, um, financing coming from abroad for the most, and then uh, for the training of imam and uh, about the veil, about this burkini. Every single day, uh, we use uh, uh, Islam uh, globally uh, to feed the campaign, and, mm. and that will, uh, will not uh, go better. Uh, it will be the contrary. And uh, I think that, uh, as I, I told you previously, trying to get a rational uh, speech or a, a rational mind on this issue will be almost impossible in the near future. When, when religion becomes a political weapon, we'll leave it there. Senator Natalie Goulet, thank you so much for being on the program.